Hello there everyone, today's video we take a look at the imminent demerger of GlaxoSmithKline's consumer healthcare business. Now, actually I've been thinking for a while um, of topics that I haven't done a video on before and I don't think I've ever done a video or series of videos on demergers. So I will start to do some of those, particularly how they affect SME businesses and the tax implications of demergers. But let's kickstart the series with a large demerger affecting a multinational company, specifically um, GSK. Now, GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, well-known um, business in the biotech sector, um, drug developments, R&D, all that kind of stuff. But it has not been performing very well for quite a few years. The city, um, the commentators in the city have said, look, this business is underperforming. It was once ranked the third largest biotech firm, uh, drug firm in, in the world by market capitalization. That's now dropped to 14th. So people have been saying for a while that what the company needs to do is spin off its consumer healthcare division and just concentrate on developing drugs. And indeed, the chief exec, um, the chief exec has promised to do this, although it's taken a while, but it finally looks like we're going to get this thing um, spun off in the next couple of weeks. So what exactly does it mean if you're a shareholder of GlaxoSmithKline, if you've got some shares, and how is this thing going to actually happen? So the whole rationale of these demergers essentially is that you've got these conglomerates and over time they get different divisions and everything else and they might have set out doing just one thing but over time they buy other businesses and they have multiple divisions which is what's happened in GSK's case so you've got the the uh, the drug development the selling of the of the drugs and you've got the consumer healthcare and the whole point of a demerger is in theory the sum of the parts is greater than the whole OK, so in other words, one plus one equals three. That's the plan. That's the anticipation. The fact that you've got these two divisions, you separate them out so they're both listed on the stock market. They can both flourish in their own right and apart rather than together, they can um, they can become bigger powerhouses than they were when they were joined together. That's the whole point of the rationale of a demerger. So current situation on GSK is this the consumer division the consumer arm consumer healthcare division of gsk is actually an existing joint venture with another uh, pharma company with pfizer so this consumer healthcare business which is going to be spun off demerged listed on the stock market currently held 68 percent by glaxo and 32 percent by pfizer so gsk is the predominant party in this it's the dominant party it has just over two-thirds of the shares so what's going to happen pre-demerger is that there will be a payout a pre-demerger dividend to both gsk and pfizer but gsk they're getting seven billion in the next couple of weeks cash injection because there is so much cash swirling around in this company that is already owned two thirds by GSK, but then it's going to be floated off in its own right. So a lot of this cash, boom, seven billion coming to GSK. OK, so then what actually happens in the demerger? Well, this is what it's going to look like. The new name for the newly listed company, Consumer Healthcare Division, it's going to be called Halion PLC, H-A-L-E-O-N. Halion PLC, and that will be floated on both the London stock market and also on New York. And the shareholdings of the new company that was the former consumer health care part of Glaxo will be as follows. So Glaxo will still own some shares, but it will own 6%. So before the spin-off, it owns 68%. Going forward, it will own 6%. Pfizer will continue to have 32%, so just under a third. 
So Pfizer, 32% of the newly listed company. It's got 32 already of the consumer division of GSK. It's going to have 32%. A pension fund, well, they're going to hold 7.5% in the new listed company. And the, the majority of the shares in Halion PLC, 545 will be owned by existing shareholders of Glaxo. So people that have the shares in Glaxo will make up more than 50% of the shareholders in Halion going forward. So basically, if you are a shareholder in Glaxo, you will also automatically become a shareholder of Halion. Assuming this thing goes through at the is ratified by the shareholders at the general meeting, which happens in London next week. And I'm assuming that it will, because like I said, it's, you know, not giving investment advice here, but everyone in the city has been saying for years, strategically, this thing needs to happen to boost shareholder value. So I'm assuming this, this thing will go through, shareholders will vote for it, and all the shareholders of Glaxo will then have shares in both Glaxo and in Halion PLC. So that's what's going to happen going forward. On top of that, there will be what we call a share consolidation of the GSK shares. Predominantly how the metrics work on the stock market and one of the key metrics is earnings per share. But of course, the, um, the shares will, re uh, to begin with, will remain the same number of shares outstanding. But then, of course, the earnings are going to drop massively because this business no longer has this business. Well, it's got 6% where it had 68. So the earnings per share profile, which is a measure of working out how well a stock does, will take a massive dent. So there will be a kind of a share consolidation within GSK to make sure that the metric is beefed back up because of the just the effects of having the D merger has on that important metric. Um, but essentially, at the end of the day, shareholders in GSK continue to have their shares in GSK, and also now they get shares in Halion PLC. Um, just another thing that's happening in the um, in the in the um, administration of this is that the GSK, um, rather than have say to shareholders, you have uh, actual share certificates in GSK going forward. They're saying, um, can you move? Uh, your share certificates to be owned by a central repository, an electronic um, arrangement whereby a company holds your shares as nominee on your behalf, which is quite common and it happens all the time. So, so that is just a separate aside, just an admin uh, getting more modernised where rather than have each individual shareholder is technically listed on public record and people go and see who owns the shares of Glaxo, the many millions of people. But going forward now, that can be um, done via um, an entity which is the which is the on the share register of owning them, but it owns them as beneficial owner for all the the thousands or millions of shareholders within GSK. So that's just a little bit of admin uh, modernization that will accompany this this demerger. But uh, yeah, these things happen now and again in the in the corporate world. This is the the biggest thing that's happened in, in uh, biotech in the UK in about twenty years. Uh, the last one was ICI. Many people were familiar with ICI. It did exactly the same thing. It had a spin out, and one of its divisions uh, became uh, AstraZeneca. That is today. So this is not uncommon. It, it's it's quite rare, but it, it's it's you know it's it's not as if wow, what are they doing here? This is this is. What people have been crying out for for a long time, and it and it's finally looks like it's going to go ahead, subject to shareholder ratification. But I can't see that being blocked because, as like I said, it is going to be generally a good thing. I would suggest for all of the shareholders. But yeah, just an overview there on demerger at a huge corporate level. I will, as I said, start a series of videos on demergers for SME businesses and the tax implications and what does it mean if you've got a if you're an entrepreneur, you've got your own business, and you need to think about possibly doing a demerger. I'll explain that uh, in later videos. So if you like this particular video on the GSK demerger, please smash that like button, do subscribe, and I'll see you soon.